Okay, thanks for the int introduction. Uh, in my paper, I would like to present and analyze some of the results of research my colleagues and I carry out in the area around Kecina, Poland. We were interested in trees with carving. To research this, we use heretical lapis kind combined with closed range photogrammetry of common beech tree in Latin Fagus sylvatica, which are covered with carving dated mostly to 1944. Okay. First of all, I assume that we have all encountered trees with carving like this one. The practice is even illustrated in written comic books. Even artists like Kazimierz Raba used trees with carving as part of the artistic installation. And my thesis is simple here. Trees with carving are part of the historical, cultural, and above all, archaeological record. One site with carving is located near Hichina and has been the subject of mine and my colleagues' interest already for a few years. You can see here the location of Hichina and an aerial photograph taken on the 26th of August 1944 that shows the forest and field fortification around Hichina. At the bottom is a contemporary satellite image of Hichina and its landscape. As you see, forest is every, everywhere. The field fortifications are crucial here. Why? In the summer and autumn of 1944, Germans started building additional field fortifications, which, as it was believed, would stop or at least slow down the advance of the Red Army from the, from the east. The historical and oral records mention that local German civilians, as well as, well as Prisoner, prisoner of war and forced laborers were ordered to dig trenches and other kinds of field fortification on land around Hichina, among others. The fortifications are well preserved until the present day, you can see them here, and are visible on LIDAR derivatives as well. Uh, in March 2017, my colleagues and I carry out a new field research program. Its goal was terrestrial apathy combined with close range photogrammetry of the tree cover with carving near Hichina. Here we are doing the research, here you are uh, the tree and the localization. All in all, the bark of 11 trees was scanned with a scanner named Riggs DZ400. In order to increase the quality and naturalistic color of documented tree, we decided to use TLS combined, com and combine it with close range photogrammetry. Point, point clouds were, crea were created using data from 45 sites and more than 2,000 photogrammetric images integrated to give full coverage of the documented tree. The final outcomes of the research were 11 3D models of tree covered by carving. Okay, uh, the basic idea behind the research was to discover the history that stands behind the carving. It was as what as one could claim the epistemology uh, the epistemology of tree carving that mattered. Initially, the idea behind the research in 2017 was very similar. We decided to use TLS and close close range photogrammetry to discover, to document and document new new carving. Within this framework, we created this 3D model. And you see one of the results, 3 C2. This is actually a 3D model and two types of visualization of carving. Bottom right, you see in red, it's an interpretation of the 
of the carving. Indeed, uh, new carvings were discovered, documented, deciphered. Uh, the analysis of the documentation and analysis of the carving seem to suggest that it was precisely the prisoner of war and force laborers who dug this part of the trenches and mark the presence of the of the tree. Why? The date 24 and 26 of August of, 19, of 1944 might be the precise date when this part was dug and the and the people, the prisoner carved date, names, surnames, initial nationalities, and other kinds of carving on the on the tree. And the crucial point and the most important part of, of, of this research. A variety of carvings done in Polish, the Syriac alphabet, English, and perhaps French, in our opinion, uh, seem to confirm that people of different nationalities took part in the working and marked their presence on the tree. In the slide number seven, you see other uh, results of the research, tree number Three, three, and three, number four. Of course, this date doesn't matter, but here you can see initial DU, which is a Polish uh, name of one of the largest cities, and the date, 1944. Here you see Simon Apostle as an English word. It's obvious it was done carved by an Englishman. And as you see, there are trees with many carvings, like tree number two. However, there, there are also trees with just a few ones, like tree number three or four. OK. And this is really the most important part of my, my, my research. However, when I was sitting in front of my computer, zooming in, zooming out, of each 3D, mo 3D model in this panel, I realized the limitation of such a perspective. To put it bluntly, uh, the trees with carvings cannot be simply reduced to carvings, and to put it more generally, epistemological issue. Without any doubt, the carved signs make the trees a very unique category of the historical record and heritage of the recent past. However, my idea is that the, the tree themselves can't hear too. And the crucial question for me was, what are they in their own independent being? And my proposition is very simple. Such tree with carbon, like the one from, from Hygina, should be conceived simply as living being, living monuments of the recent past. The carved sign materialized, monumentalized, Memorialize what? Human fears, worries, emotions, forced labor, short, in short, flesh and blood human beings, beings from the recent, recent past. Notice the fact that people who carve this signs are already dead. The tree, on the other hand, are still alive and grow up. Even more, I have bad, bad news for you. Uh, you all be, we, we all be. Uh, that and the tree will be still materializing, monumentalizing, memorializing what happened in 1944 at Hichina for the next, who knows, one or even two, two centuries. And this is precisely the, the, the reason why I conceive that tree as living monument of the recent, of the recent past. Okay. Quick, quick conclusion. Uh, at the most elementary level, it can be said that nature and culture, body and mind, practice and path, and the tangible and intangible have symmetry may remain and <coughs> constituted the tree as the unique category of living monuments of the recent past. Okay, thanks.